All right, guys, so for our final tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a logo similar to this and how to actually add a little bit more detail on things of that nature. For this one, this one is going to continue. Uh, I want you to continue following along with the tutorial and to actually create this for your name still. This is not going to be your superhero logo yet. So follow along exactly with me to see how to do this and we're going to walk through how to create this exact tutorial, um, this exact logo. You can change the letter in the middle to fit your name, but this is going to be one for your name just so that you can learn the technique, you can learn how to do all these different pieces of it and then once you've learned how to go through and do a number of these different effects, then you're going to create your own for your superhero. Okay. All right, so what we want to do to start, this is our goal of what we want to create. So in order to create that, we're going to go ahead and come up and hit File, New. And it's going to give us our options for a new document. We're going to come over to Print, and we're going to change the orientation. And we can just change the points to, uh, to inches as well. We're going to hit Create. And we've got our new artboard to begin working on. So as we can start working through there, the first thing that we want to put in place is the star. That was the first thing I added there. So I'm going to go ahead and come over to the star tool and I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and start drawing in my star. And it was pretty big, so I'm going to draw it fairly large. I'm going to hit shift as I do it and also option as I draw this star in place. And drop that in place just like so. And I think that's pretty good as far as the size goes. The color of it was red, so I'm going to click on my fill, and I'm going to fill that in to be red. And I'm going to just make this stroke just a little bit thicker, about five points. I also want to make sure that this star is aligned, so I'm going to go to Window and hit Align. And I'm going to come over to my Align, and I'm going to first make sure that it's aligned to Artboard, which it is. And then I'm going to hit horizontal align and I'm going to hit vertical align so that it's directly in the center. All right, next, what I want to do is I wanted to add the circle that was going around it. So you notice there was a circle that was going all the way around this star. So I'm going to come over to my star tool. I'm going to hit the ellipse tool. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my circle and using the ellipse tool. Now, one thing that you need to make sure that you do is when you draw this circle in, in order for it to show up correctly, you need to make sure that you hit shift. Hitting shift is going to create this perfect circle. And it's going to be really important that we create it as a perfect circle for our purposes. I'm going to go ahead and align it just to make sure I've got it the size I want. And that looks pretty good. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit fill. And I'm going to hit the um, white square with the red line through it, which makes the fill transparent. And that looks pretty good right there where I've got it. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of click off of that so it's not selected. And I'm going to go back to my star tool and I'm going to draw in the smaller blue stars. So I'm going to just start with one smaller star. And again, I'm going to hit shift and then I'm going to hit option so that I've got that uh, just that perfect star with it aligned perfectly and I'm gonna go ahead and this star was blue so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in and I'm gonna drag this down a little bit into place where I want it so I think something about like there and I'm going to just horizontally align it I don't want to vertically align it because I want it to be a little bit higher up Okay, now, if you know, remember, there was a number of stars that went all the way around this circle. The way that I did that was I drew this first star in place. Then I'm going to utilize this circle that's in place as well. So to do that, what I want to do is I'm going to hit Shift on my keyboard, and I'm going to click on this circle as well. And when I do that, I now have both of these selected you'll see that the reason that we wanted to make sure that we had the circle selected as well is because it brings up this center point. 
And this point is exactly in the center because my circle was aligned. And that's going to allow us to use this rotate tool over here. This is also the reason you needed to make sure that you drew a perfect circle in place because when we rotate this, we're going to rotate it and if it's not a perfect circle, it's not going to rotate around correctly. So when I go to hit my rotate button, before I do that, I actually want to hit option on my keyboard. So I'm going to hold down option on my keyboard and then I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to use the little target that it gave me to select this center point there. When I have selected that and I double click on the rotate button, you'll see that one of the what comes up is that it brings up this preview. Now I already have set here the angle to be 60 degrees. And this is going to work out well because a circle is 360 degrees and we need to make sure that whatever the angle is, it's going to rotate around so that it fills it in. And so whatever number we put in place has to be divisible evenly by, or 360 has to be evenly divisible by that number. So I'm going to put 60 in there and then I'm going to hit copy. And when I hit copy, it adds a copy of that star in place. Now I could go back and I could continue just double clicking on that and hitting copy or I could hit on my keyboard I could hit command and D and it will duplicate that same action that I took. And so command D duplicates that and I can come up to edit and I can see, oops, maybe not under edit, and I can see that duplicate is one of the options, although I guess it's not. All right, so once I've done that, I've got that in place, and I am able to then decide, you know what, I think this circle was behind the, everything. This circle was all the way in the background, so I'm just going to kind of drag a box over that so it selects the circle. There's a couple ways that I can do this. I can go up to Object, and I can go to Arrange, and I can just hit Send to Back. Or I could do the same thing by doing a two-finger click, arrange, send it back. And remember uh, what we're doing is we're working with our layers. So if I do the same thing I can see if I select this circle if I go to layers I can hit this down arrow here next to it or if I click on it it will turn into the down arrow and I can see then that all the circles are in the back. Now the reason that there's so many circles is that when I was copying these stars because I had the circle selected it was also copying the circle as well. So by selecting those all, sending them to back, it'll all go in place there. All right. All right. The next thing that we want to do then is we want to utilize what are called symbols. And symbols I can find by going up to window and then scrolling down to symbols. Now these symbols are pretty cool and these are built into Illustrator. And so I can click on this little down arrow here uh, next to these books. And it opens up the library of symbols. And I want to go to this one called Regal Vector Pack. Now, there's obviously a lot of different packs and ones that you can use. So you could explore those later on your own. But for today, we want to use Regal Vector Pack. From here, there's a number of different pieces that we have access to. And I'm going to start with these wings. I think these are kind of cool. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag these over. And I'm going to expand these. I'm going to scale these up and make these a little bit bigger. Uh, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and just horizontally align them. And then I'm going to do a two finger click on them. Actually, I'm going to make them just a little bigger, I think. That's pretty good. And I'm going to do a range, and I'm going to say send to back as well. And so those will go to the back, and they are kind of come out from behind the stars. So that's looking pretty good. I also like this little uh, lion thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that in place as well. And I'm going to close these. And <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to just hit shift and scale is down just a little bit 
It looks pretty good. And I want to add this same uh, line over onto the other side as well. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hit Option on my keyboard. And then I'm going to just kind of click and drag it over. Once I've clicked and dragged it over, I've got the, an exact duplicate of it. However, I want it to be facing the other direction. So I'm going to hit Object. I'm going to hit Transform. I'm going to hit Reflect. And when I hit reflect, I want to say vertical and then 90 degrees. And you can see then I've got my preview checked. You can see that it turns it the correct way. So I hit OK. And I'm just going to kind of position it in so that it lines up correctly. It looks pretty good. All right, and I've got that right where I want it to be then. Now, you may, when you use these symbols, you may decide at times that you want these to be different colors. And you'll notice that the fill doesn't really do anything. Fill doesn't change, it. even though we have it selected, there's nothing really happening here with this when we try to change these. So if you want to change your symbols, you can do that by going to Window, Appearance, and then down at the bottom you need to come down where it says Add New Fill. And we're going to hit Add New Fill, and you see in here now that we can change this fill color, and it's going to change that. I actually want to just keep it black, and although I think this one actually was a little bit gray, so I'm going to do the same thing with this one as well, just to make it black. So I'm going to say Window, Appearance, I'm going to say Add New Fill, and then that's going to change that to black as well. All right, so that's looking pretty good. All right, the last couple things that I want to do here is I want to go ahead and put my type in. And so I'm going to go ahead and click here, and I'm going to put the letter O in place for my name. And I'm going to go ahead and come over here to this and just kind of find a one that is has a little bit of a kind of a cool look for my name. So I'm going to just use this one. While it's selected, I'm also going to go ahead and just change the size of it and make it quite a bit bigger. So I'm going to just type in the size that I want. And I'm going to go ahead and try to align it. Now you'll notice though that the vertical, the horizontal line worked fine. The vertical line did not work very well and it didn't put it in the middle. And that's because it has this bounding box around it. So for this one, I may have to just kind of drag it into place. I can reposition it, make sure it's right in the middle then. Finally, I want to go ahead and add some effects to this as well. And so if I click on my star, I see that I can come up to effect and there's a number of different effects that I can choose from. And I'm going to go ahead and go to stylize and go to drop shadow. And I'm going to just keep all these the same for now and hit OK. And what you'll see then is it adds this kind of drop shadow effect to my star. And I think that looks pretty cool. So I actually am going to go ahead and select all of these. So, oops, not the circle. I want to do the wings. So I'm going to click on the wings. I'm going to hit shift on the keyboard. And then I'm going to go ahead and while I'm holding down shift, oops, I think I'm, while I'm holding down shift, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. And I'm going to go ahead and do these guys as well. I'm going to go back up to Effect, Drop Shadow, hit OK. And it gives it that cool look to it. All right, so this is exactly what I want you to make. You can change the letter in the middle. But otherwise, I want you to create this look. And really the idea is that you're able to learn how to do these different shapes, how to rotate things how to put these symbols in place, how to add the effects to them. And by putting all those things in place, you really have learned some good skills in order to create your own logo for your superhero.